In this video, I'm going to introduce you to a new logic puzzle called Suguru. As you can see, it comprises a grid where you're given a few numbers to start and you need to fill in the grid like Sudoku, except the rules here are different. Grids in Suguru can be any size. In this example, I've chosen a 6x6 grid. You'll notice that the cells are divided into containers or groups, shown with these darkened borders. Each group may consist of one to five cells. The rules are simple. A group of three cells will contain the numbers one to three. Likewise, a group of five cells will contain the numbers one to five. The only other rule is that Two adjacent cells, including ones diagonal to each other, cannot contain the same number. That's it. Very simple. But some puzzles can be a real challenge to solve. So let's get to solving. Let's start with the group at the top here. It must contain a number 1. Now the 1 cannot be in that cell or that cell, or that cell, because they're adjacent to that one. Therefore, the only place for the one is there. Similarly, if we come down to this block of three here, the one cannot be there because it's adjacent to that one, cannot be there, adjacent to that one, therefore, it must be there. Now, there aren't any more obvious cells to fill in, so we need to get a little bit cleverer. Let's have a look at this group of three cells here. Each one of those cells must contain a 1, 2, or a 3. Now, if we look at that cell, we notice that it's adjacent to all three of those cells. This is significant because in this group here, one of these three cells contains a 1 and all three of these cells are adjacent to that cell. Therefore, that cell cannot contain a 1. Similarly, it can't contain a 2 or 3 because it's adjacent to those three cells and one of them will contain a 2 and one will contain a 3. Therefore, it can't contain a 1, 2 or 3. It can't contain a 5 because that's already in the group. So that cell must be a 4. This demonstrates a fundamental technique that you need to employ when solving Suguru puzzles. Look for all the places that a number can appear in a group, and any cell that is adjacent to all those cells that that number can appear cannot contain that number. Don't worry if this is not clear yet. I will be demonstrating a few more examples in this video. Now if you look at this bottom group, we can see that the 4 can't go there or there, therefore the 4 must go there. Now let's look at this cross-shaped grid to see where a 2 might go. It can't go there, it can go there, or there, or there. And in this group over here, the 2 cannot go there or there, but it can go there or there. Now look at this cell. You'll notice that this 2 is adjacent to all the other cells in this group where a 2 must go. We don't know which one of those three cells there will contain a 2, but one of them will. Therefore, this cell cannot contain a 2. So therefore, we can remove the 2 from there. This means that the only place the 2 can go in this group is there. We can remove the two from there, and from there, and from there. And now if we look at this group of three, there is only one place left for the two. And that is there. Also, if we look at this group over here, the two cannot go there or there. Therefore, the two must go there. And if we look at this group over here, the two cannot go there, there, or there. So therefore, the 2 must go there. 
Also in this group we can see that the 5 cannot go there or there, therefore that must be a 5. Now let's move down to this group in the bottom left corner. It needs a 2 and a 3, so there's a 2 or a 3 there or there. But if we look at this cell here, it's adjacent to the two possible places where a 2 is going to go in this group. Therefore, this cell cannot contain a 2. Therefore, this must be the 3. And then, of course, that is the 2, and that would be the 2. Now let's look at where the 3 goes in this group over here. It cannot go in that cell. And in this cell, you'll note that it's adjacent to both the two possible cells where a 3 must go in this group. So therefore, a 3 cannot go in that cell. This means the only place left for the 3 is there. And once that's a 3, we know that that would then be the 1. And that would be 3. And the 3 cannot go there, so that would be 3. Oops, that would be 3 which leaves that to be 4. If we look at this group at the bottom here, the only place left for the 1 can't go there, therefore that must be a 1, which means that's the 5. And now, if we look at that cell there, it's surrounded by 1, 2, 3 and 5. So therefore the only number that could possibly go there is a 4. Finishing off this group, that can't be a 1 because it's adjacent to that one, so therefore the 1 must go there, and the 3 would go over there. Now if we have a look at this group over here, it's missing a 4 or 5, so it's either there or there. And now, if we have a look at this cell here, this cell here is adjacent to those two cells in that group that contain a 4 or 5, Therefore, it cannot contain a 4 or a 5. This cell cannot contain a 4. Therefore, the only place left for the 4 in this group is there. Similarly, then, the only place left for a 5 is there. That means that one must be the 3. And this can't be a 5, so that's the 4. And that's a 5. So all that remains is to solve the final two cells. Well, that's it. It was a rather tricky puzzle to solve, but hopefully it gave you a good idea as to go about tackling these Segura puzzles. They can be very satisfying to solve.